it's gonna be loser. The creator or the creation? The creation. The creation would lose, would lose out on its happiness, would lose out on its, actually what it's supposed to do, on its fulfillment of things, and that's why it will turn unhappy. Huh? People often, because of ignorance and arrogance, two things that, that are very important that di dictate sometimes people's lives. In you know, people's lives, you see, sometimes dictated by two things, arrogance and ignorance. And usually, ignorance leads to arrogance. Huh? Why? A human being is like a tree. Everybody, all of you have seen trees. If you see an apple tree, if the apple tree is filled with fruits, what happens to the apple tree? It bows down. But if the apple tree is empty, there's no fruits in it, what happens to it? Mal huh? asanabel, the poet said, Mal asanabel tanhani, bitawabu'in, wal farigatu ru'usuhunna shawamikhu. The husks that are filled with grains, they're bowing down almost out of humility. But those who are empty, they're always like this. Don't see me on here. Huh? Arrogance and ignorance usually leads people to these things. Arrogance and ignorance may lead someone not to only defy the rules that a human must live and coexist with their fellow humans, but also defy the rules of the Creator and shatter everything that is humane and that is worthwhile. And the results indeed are grave because disasters lead to disasters. What do I mean by that? Take an example. Trying to defy someone who is very powerful, a powerful might. The Romans, let's say at that time. Can you defy the Roman Empire? What would happen if you defy the Roman Empire? Wipe, they would wipe you on the face of, from the face of the earth, right? A human, notice this, defy, they set the rules and they defy them. I'll give you this example from our history. Abu Muslim al-Khurasani. Abu Muslim al-Khurasani was a man, Abu Muslim, his name is Abu Muslim, was a man who actually was the tool for establishing the Abbasi Empire. The Abba, after the Umayyads, the Umayyad dynasty came, the Abbasi came. Abu Muslim was among the people who were actually the, the killers on the field. Soldiers on the field, the killers on the, whatever you want to call them, right? He was among the people who actually were slaughtering the Umayyads anyway they see them to establish the reign and the kingdom of the Abbasis. An ins instrumental tool. He was not from the Abbasi family. But he was among those who were their tools and was very faithful, uh, integral, instrumental to that rule for a very long time. Eventually, he has been so close to all the Khulafa of Abbasi Khulafas and all this. Abu Ja'far al-Mansur was the Abbasi Khalifa of the time. Abu Muslim Khurasani came and wanted to marry a woman from Bani al-Abbas from the family of Abbas, he wanted to marry a woman. Abu Muslim was Mawla, he was non-Arab. He was from other uh, people, from other places that came. Now, uh, Abu Ja'far al-Mansur not, was not comfortable with this. Okay, okay, fine, you served us. On your shoulders, this kingdom was established, but you dare, you rise your level, you, you are now up, you think you are worthy of marrying one of our females? Huh? He kept it for him and had these people after him. You know how some people are, their job is only to go after people. And right, this is what he said. And this is what he said. And not only that, take it out of context. Mm -hmm. He said this, but he really means this. Oh, you should see. Huh? Munafiqeen are all over the place. Now, so people are like that. Abu Ja'far al Masul sent some people after this Abu Muslim. He left him in his job because he was his wazir, almost right hand man. He sent people after him, write down everything and you know, make it, make it rich, make the substance good, juicy. Well, years come, Abu Ja'far calls Abu Muslim, now it's too much. And he puts the guards behind, he hides the guards with their swords and things so Abu Muslim doesn't see them. Abu Muslim comes in. And Abu Ja'far al-Mansur, the Khalifa, he starts telling him, why did you do this in that day? Why did you, huh? now, now the blacklist comes. As long as we're good, all the, uh, it's like the engagement. As long as every, first in the engagement, everything looks good. After that, now all the, all the bad things come out. So now all the bad things come out. Why did you do this that day? Why did you do this that day? Why did you do this that day? 
Abu Muslim al-Khurasani, he sort of figured out that there's something that's not normal. Why is he treating me this way? And he felt something is abnormal, so he starts apologizing. Apologizing, I'm sorry, oh, Ya Amir Mu'in, Ya Khalifa, oh, this, uh, I'm sorry. And then at the end, he pushed it too much. He said, Abu Muslim, he said, okay, I resign. I, I, I'm not worthy of this. I understand. Here is my resignation. He says, no, may Allah make me resign if I make you resign. Where are you going? Where do you think you're going? You're not going to resign. It's not going to go this easy. He ordered the people, the guard, and he, they killed them. Right away, there's, there's no, uh, uh, there's no indication. He didn't give him a chance. So right away, he killed them for defying this order, for defying something that Abu Jafar thought was very important or something sentimental to him. And uh, he told him, "Atazgu an al-dina la yanqadi istawfi bil kaili aba mujrimi." You, you are killing Abu, Abu Muslim. He is telling him after he killed him, he says, you killed all the Umawis and you thought this will not come back to you. This will not hunt you. Well, time is back. This will hunt you. Take this as a, as a payback for what you did. No, though he was his partner in crime. But take this for what you did. Not Abu Muslim, Abu Mujrim. Father of criminal, you are criminal, you are no longer a Muslim. Huh? اشرب بكأس كنت أنت ساقيها أمر في الحلق من شد العلقمي. Take drink from this cup that you used to give to people, which is more bitter than bitterness itself. Huh? Shows you that sometimes when you defy someone who's not even that powerful, look what they do to you. They want to wipe you out of the face. They want to make prevent you from breathing if they can. They want to prevent you from drinking water if they can. And Islam, this ayah, the whole point of this is to take you to the ayah. First of all, Islam tells you, wait a minute. Ya yuhannas, wa inna khalaqnakum. Inna khalaqna, ya taqullah, taqullah aladhi khalaqakum in nafsin wahida. O people, you have been created the same. Number one, Allah is your Lord. You're all equal. What made this higher than this takes us to the second point, which tells us then, who made one above and one below? What is the standard for being high and low? What is the standard of being equivalent or not equivalent? Who are you equivalent to and why are not equivalent to others? Who, who gave the right to people to enslave others like that? Might, right? And therefore, Islam does not believe in the logic of power, but believes in the, log in the power of logic. And there's a difference. And the power of logic is different than the logic of power. And therefore, Abu Ja'far al-Mansur couldn't realize this. That matters will also come, ta come, time will also come when he will also be white. And his dynasty will also go. But he told him, you can't do this. He killed them because simply he wanted to marry this, this, per this person. And Islam now, notice this ayah. Ya Yohannas. اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة. It means that Allah created you from one soul, from one thing. You are all, all mankind, all of you mankinds. Whether you are powerful, whether you are weak, whether you are rich, whether you are poor, you are all the same. You all came from one, one individual. You all came from one unit. You all came from one entity. There is no differences among you. You're all the same. You all have something in common. And Islam wants us to, want to realize this so we feel the love and the kindness and the mercy to each other, regardless who we are, regardless of our differences, regardless of our ideologies and our theories, because we all come back to the same family and the same unit, and we're all people. We may be different colors and different ideologies and different thoughts and different this, but at the end of the day, we are one people, is what the ayah is trying to tell us. Huh? النبي صلى الله تعالى عليه وآله وسلم في بني بياضة من الأنصار among the أنصار there was a true tribe بني بياضة أبو هند was among the الصحابة who has two things going against him number one he was مولى he was not from a tribe he was from from some foreign country came number two حجام Hijama was his, uh, his, uh, his, his uh, profession, let's say barber, sort of. If we were to say people that used to do hijama, but also they used to cut hair and all these things. 
And num these two things are going against him. Why? I mean, number one, you're not from a tribe. Number two, you are a barber and you want to go and marry from the Ansar. And they said, no, sorry. He, he goes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said, Ya Rasulullah, this is... And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, practicing this that we're all equal, said to him, marry him. Marry him off? What is wrong with him? Huh? Just like people nowadays. Uh, the Quran and the Sunnah, dear brothers and sisters, are not simply something that existed 1427 years ago. They live today among us. Because nowadays we have this profession. Okay. Uh, he has to have three PhDs, two masters, and